Um, so let's revisit the um, logical function of XOR. So just to recall, if we have inputs A and B, then if our output is A X or B, then the truth table looks like this. 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. Um, XOR is only going to be true when these inputs are different. Okay, so we have 0 if they're the same, if they're 0 and 0, and it, the output 0 if these are both 1. Okay, so that means that we the definition of XOR is A, X, or B can be written in terms of ands and ors. It's A not B or A B not. And this function here is logically equivalent to this one because this is only true when our inputs are different. Now um, this means that if we have inputs A and B and these come into an XOR gate, we can replace this with a circuit that has um, A and B where if we take an A and invert it and AND it with a B and then we take an A and a B and invert it, take these results and OR them together. So um, you might be asking when would we ever implement this as opposed to this? because this is just one XOR gate where this is two inverters, two ANDs, and an OR. And the answer is, um, if we're optimizing for number of gates, this would be a good choice. If we're optimizing for cost and speed, this might be a better choice because ANDs, ORs, and NOTs are cheap and fast. So it all depends on what your criteria is that you're optimizing for. But um, algebraically, we have equivalence between this and this. So that means if we are proving Boolean um, identities for XOR, we get to use everything that we've established for AND and OR, which we talked about earlier in the module. So um, right now, let me write out all of those properties for you, and then the next video we'll do the proofs. And I encourage you to watch that next video because it'll be good um, practice for you to see some uh, Boolean algebra proofs. So the first property is that if we have A and B XORed, and we negate that, that is equal to A not B or, um, sorry, A not B not or A B, okay? And like I said, we'll prove that in the next video. The next one we have is that if we negate one of the arguments of the XOR, that is equal to a x or b not. Okay, so we know that this is equal to that. If we know that this is equal to this and this is equal to that, that means that's also equal to this. So these are all equal to each other. Um, we also have that if we negate the other argument, that this is also equal to the same thing. So this is equivalent to this, is equivalent to this, is equivalent to this. Okay, great. Um, the other one we have is that if we XOR A with zero, we get A, and if we XOR anything with one, we get A complemented. And then we also have that A X or B is equal to B X or A. You might recognize this as commutativity. And we also have that A X or B X or C is equal to A X or B X or C. So it doesn't matter what the grouping is, you might recognize this as associativity. And again, in order to um, prove all these properties, we're going to use basically these same properties um, that we have for ands and ors by rewriting our XOR function in terms of ands and ors, basically. Um, so that'll be in the next video.